Wales Carnival Night tonight, tonight, so we're just getting the cart set up, ready for possession. It is now about half past three, and the possession starts at half past seven. The first thing that I do when I get to the car is do my daily checks. Vehicle checks should be done on every vehicle, but most importantly on large, heavy, commercial and passenger carrying vehicles. And we fall into all of those categories apart from the commercial. To be able to put our car on the road, we must have a VSO, which stands for Vehicle Special Order. We must follow all of the rules of the VSO in terms of construction, maintenance and inspection. A few years ago, there was a rule brought in that we needed inspection chambers for wheels. So rather than just looking underneath the car to see if a tyre is flat, we can now look inside, see the wheel nut indicators and look at the tyre tread. So one thing that I would like to do is have a little cab tour. Now this is a Ford Cargo IVK. It's a 2838. What we have here is a steam free, bug free, chip free windscreen don't even need windscreen wipers for it. I'm just going to get inside and show you a bit more about what's inside of the truck. If you're worried about waking somebody up late at night by shutting the doors, this truck is perfect because there are no doors. You just have to try and climb in. And I make it really awkward for myself every single time. We are sat in the cab. What I have is a seat that moves forwards and backwards and goes up and down a bit as well. We have the radiator in behind the driver. Not a hot radiator, unfortunately. That is our new core in there. In under here is a button for my heated seat, which is normally on two. And I think it will be on two tonight because apparently it's supposed to rain tonight, which I'm not too happy about. Inside here we have our cameras. This is an original Ford Cargo steering wheel and dash. Over here we have an Eaton Twin Splitter and according to the comments I've had over the years, I don't know how to use this one so clearly this is just for show. It's on my right hand side rather than my left because the seat position was moved from the right hand side of the cab into the middle and this stayed in the same place along with the handbrake. Down here we have our indicator stick and we can flash our lights. Over here is the windscreen wiper stick for our lovely magic windscreen. Buttons here for my light bars, handbrake, cameras, beacons. Over here is costume storing facility. So this is not a sleeper cab and therefore does not have heating or night heater, but what it does have is full air conditioning. As you can see, the air conditioning is on at all times. So down in under here, we have our clutch pedal, brake pedal and accelerator. As you can tell, it's not great in here. So I'm just wondering if anybody's got the number for special interior. One good feature of this cab is you also don't need to get out to check the oil. You check it by pulling, by pulling. Uh oh. There you go. <laughs> Pulling this long dipstick out here, I'm going to wipe it off a little bit. I'm going to push it back in, pull it back out, and then we can check our oil without even having to leave the cab. We have plenty on there, look. Wonderful. And this h reg has only racked up 85,622 Ks. And getting out of the cab is just as easy as getting in. Ooh, I think that was my knee clicked. So now I'm just gonna fill in my movement and journey check sheet. There's some things that I haven't checked yet, which I cannot check until the engine's on, but we're not gonna do that right now. We'll do that closer to the start of possession. In vehicle reg, H282, HOD. This truck was actually made in 1990. So it's actually only five years younger than me. Trailer number in possession, we have two trailers. So that's VCC2 and VCC3. The tug is VCC1. And then I can tick down everything. 
fuel, we know it got fueled up today. The water you can check from the cab, which is just behind the driver's seat. Oil, I've already checked. Thorough inspection of the tyres. Wheels and wheel nut indicators. Driver feeling fit and well, and I am. We are definitely parked well into the trees, so I'm going to have to be really careful as I pull off later. I'm starting to feel a bit peckish at this point, so I start walking down to get some chips. As we're at the back, it's quite a long walk. I get some chips for myself and a burger for my dad, and by the time I'm walking back up, it's dark. There are a few jobs to do around the cart tonight before the procession starts. Mike has quite a big job to do on the electrical side of things tonight. Then it's time for me to get the engine on do my last final checks and get myself sorted. Dan, the road crew captain, fills in his side of the paperwork and then it's time for me to get my costume on, which I'm not really looking forward to doing as it's quite cold tonight. So as soon as I've got the dress on, I put my coat back on whilst I do my wig and my finishing touches. My lips also need a good touch up after my chips wore my lipstick away. And last but not least, the headset. By this point, my sister and the rest of the cart personnel start to turn up it won't be long now before the carts start moving, so the road crew get the cart personnel on the cart. Martin helps me check my lights and all are working perfectly. As the cart pulls off in front, I'm just waiting for my road crew to tell me when I can move. Because it's so cold, I don't take my coat off until we're nearly at the start of the procession. The first part of the route is a roundabout. The reason they have the stop go signs at the start is because this route goes around in a circle. So as I'm starting the route, there will be carts that will be finishing, as you can see here on my right hand side, coming out of the weight limit. Wales Carnival is my absolute favourite to drive. Some people think that I'm absolutely mad for finding this my favourite. But for me, because this is a massive challenge, I love the feeling of getting through the carnival with the cart intact. Wales is also the smallest city in England. As we're going round, one of the marshals gives me and some of my road crew some lollipops but i'm not in the position to have mine now i will have it later being only about 10 carts from the back of the lineup i thought we were going to have quite a few holdups but actually it's going really well so far wells is a very old city so it's full of corners and narrow streets this here is the only big left hand bend in the route and when i'm out of this left hand bend i need to prepare to do a sharp right hand bend so as soon as the road crew tell me that i'm clear of the left hand bend I get right over to the left to make the right hand bend. I always watch for the car in front of me to see which lines they have taken, as this gives me a good indication of where I need to be on the road. And although I am an experienced driver, it never hurts to watch somebody else. You never know what you might learn. Part of the reason why I've always volunteered to do Wales Carnival is because my mum and dad always used to like watching Wales Carnival. But since dad has driven the car, he hasn't been able to watch with mum. When I started driving, mum had an illness that affected her immune system. It means that she stays away from crowded places and they still haven't watched together. And then we get to the most challenging part of the route. These corners are always a bit slow and it's the only section where the carts actually turn their music off. After a while, we are able to move and what I need to do is drive as far forwards as I can before I turn the corner. I go up over the pavement and drop down the kerb where the sandbags are to help minimise the impact on the personnel. Even with the sandbags there, it is still quite hard to keep the cart steady, as now we are in quite a steep decline, and the brakes on this old truck can be very harsh. This is also the moment that the heavens decide to open, and the rain starts pouring down on us. After a quick check around on the corner, the road crew decide that the car is safe to move down the hill. What I need to do now is get right into the centre of the road to go down a very narrow lane between the buildings and spectators. Points in the route like these where I'm very grateful for my road crew as they are making sure that everyone is enjoying the car at a safe distance. The corner at the bottom of the hill is also quite a challenge because of the downhill gradient and the camber of the road and the bay windows sticking out of the buildings. Many a car has been stuck on this corner. There is also a gutter on the floor that the committee has put sleepers into so that the wheels of the car don't get caught in the gully. As I'm going round, I try to look as much of the car as I possibly can, but from where I'm sat, I can't see a lot. So I need to rely on my road crew as second eyes. 
At one point, there was talk of reversing the route at Wales Carnival, which I think would be a very bad idea just because of these two corners. It would be tough enough to navigate these two corners at the same time of going uphill. But on top of this, you could have the potential of a very wet night or a very cold night, and this could lead to lack of traction on the hill, which could lead to needing a wrecker or a tractor to help the car up the hill. Not only would this be a lot of hassle, it would considerably slow down the procession. This carnival has gone very quickly and smoothly so far until we make a stop. We are told by one of the marshals that something has gone on up ahead and we may be here for a little while. After 5-10 minutes of the cart not moving, the personnel are told that they can stop. But my stepson Billy doesn't want to stop entertaining the crowds and Martin shows me a video of him getting the crowd in the party spirit as I cannot see it from where I'm sat. All I can hear is loud cheers for Billy. Luckily, the hold-up isn't too long and we're soon on the move again. Because this route goes around in a circle, it's a perfect opportunity for cart personnel to go and watch the carnival once they get off the cart. Here I am waving at Queen Bee Trucker, Emma. I'd like to say a massive thanks to Emma and her boyfriend Tommy for taking a few videos of Vagabond's cart for me to post. Hopefully Emma will have the opportunity to drive one of the carts on the circuit next year. Though I do find it strange that her boyfriend is still wearing shorts at this time of year. Once again I get snapped by one of our brilliant carnival photographers and I see Dave, one of the other drivers for Vagabond's with his sons. Also passed by some lads from Ramblers Carnival Club that are always giving us loads of support. And then we're at the end of Wales Carnival and back to the roundabout where we started. We head straight on at the roundabout towards Glastonbury and pull up as far as we possibly can before we get the personnel off. As they're getting the personnel off, this is my opportunity to put my warm clothing back on and a few extra bits as well. As a driver, it's important to feel comfortable in the driving position. So feeling warm and alert is important. Hello. Get on down. All right. Wow, well, very well. It's wet. I can't reach Come on. I can't reach. <laughs> <laughs> Sambo from Ramblers is marrying our safe safe from Vagabonds next year. There are a lot of interclub relationships in Carnival. Many families split between different clubs. They all get on really well in the Carnival spirit, so it doesn't really matter. It's looking now like most of the personnel are off, so hopefully it won't be long before we go. I tell him that I am ready to move as long as my road crew are ready for me to move. The rule is that we don't move until the road crew have checked around the car and give me the go ahead to say that it's safe to move. I get the go ahead from the road crew that I'm safe to move and then it's off to Glastonbury. Chrissy is waiting in the escort vehicle just up to the right of me and as I pass he will slot him behind me. As you've probably noticed we haven't split down for this movement. This is because the police close the road between Wales and Glastonbury for us to go fully trained all the way to Glastonbury. Because the road is closed and there are no public on the road we can travel at 100 foot. And instead of needing four escort vehicles, we just need the one escort vehicle behind. When we get to Glastonbury, we need to find Division 3. We pass Division 4 and we pull up to the back of Division 3. Once I'm parked up, I shut everything down and I have a little walk around check of the car just to make sure that nothing is damaged or needs some maintenance. We also need to make sure that everything is off the cart, like the fire extinguishers and the ladders. So I'm back from Wales Carnival now and I've had a cup of tea and I feel a bit better now. I'm starting to warm up. So 
that's that for Wales Carnival and that's the end of my driving for this year. We have a carnival tomorrow, which is Glastonbury, but the chap who drove last Saturday is going to drive that carnival. Oh, my lips look awful. <laughs> I won't be driving tomorrow. I will be road crew. And then we bring the cart back to Bridgewater to put back in the shed. As soon as we get down to Glastonbury, we do the reverse of the night before and put the fire extinguishers and ladders back onto the car. Also connect some cables that had to be disconnected for travelling. All the checks have been done by tonight's driver and we get the personnel on the car. I'm not sure if Maddie is happy that she's up onto her podium or whether she's just happy it's the last carnival. As much as we all love carnival, it does take a lot out of us and we are all due a rest. Brian is out tonight giving Vagabonds a lot of support and he has been in the club since he was a teenager. Once you have been a member of Vagabonds for 25 years, you get the title of life member. Sarah and Martin seem to be having a little dance off as we're waiting to go into procession, but who do you think has won the dance off? Marketeers watch us as we head down towards the start line and they have a YouTube video made about them in 2017 called Give It Rice. I will add the link in the description. In front of us in procession tonight is Limecomb Carnival Club, which is one of the oldest clubs in Bridgewater. There are always people holding up signs like this at this part of the route, and it makes us feel really good. So whoever you are at Glastonbury Carnival who does this sort of thing, Thank you very much. This is one of the hardest corners at the route at Glastonbury Carnival, as not only are you turning the corner, you are also heading downhill. My sister said to me the other day how she loves being on cart when we turn this corner. I told her as a driver how much I hate it. As we head up Glastonbury High Street, we see some of the Vaggies girls cheering us on. A bit of a steep climb up Glastonbury High Street but it's okay as long as you don't have to stop and at the top it's one last corner before we get to the end of procession and it's always very much mixed emotions as we get to the end of procession at Glastonbury. Carnival is something that a lot of us wish that we could do full-time but trying to juggle it around all our jobs is tiring. Once we get around to the split down area we can split down ready to go back to Bridgewater. Touch more, touch more, John. Whoa! Lovely. Where's your pin? Right, back and touch more, John. Just a touch, please. So Once the pin's in, all we have to do is connect the airlines and the cable for the lights. Then we realise that all the ladders have been packed away, but the generator hasn't been turned off. And for some reason, I'm the obvious person to send up there. Wonderful. Once the marshals are happy that enough spectators have dispersed from the carnival, they start to release the carts. And we can make our way back on the 17 mile journey back to Bridgewater. And this year we have a really easy run back. We didn't meet much and the weather's been on our side as well. I've just got home from Glastonbury Carnival. We've parked the cart up all split down and we're going to put it back in the shed tomorrow because it's just too dark to get down that lane at this time of night and too late because we'll be going past people's houses and that's not fair. It's now about half past one. Um, I'm just having a cup of tea then I'll go to bed and we need to be back down there for nine o'clock. But then I'd rather get it done early and then I've got the rest of Sunday to sort myself out to go back to work. <laughs> This is always one of the hardest mornings um, in Carnival. I'm up early to go down and put the cart away. Hopefully it will go well, but we'll see. We never know. The first thing we do is get the cart down to the end of the lane, where we brought it down to for Bridgewater Carnival just after we took it out of the shed. We brought it out of the shed in three pieces and we have to take it back in in three pieces.
The next bit that needs to go down is the cart. So we need to unhitch the tractor from the generator trailer and put it onto the front of the cart. Sometimes we have put the cart in backwards so that it's all ready to bring out the next year. But this year we have decided to put it in forwards, strip it down and then bring it out to turn it round once it has been dismantled. When I bought the cart out of the shed and down the lane before Bridgewater, it was very nerve wracking because I know so many people had put time and effort into building that cart. Putting it back in the shed is not so nerve wracking. However, I still need to take care whilst going down the lane. Most of the models on the cart have been sold to theatre companies and the like, and that's something that brings important revenue into the club. As everything in Carnival is paid for through fundraising. Things like bulbs and holders and anything else that can be reused in other years will be saved and reused, as that will save us a lot of money. As you can see, I've only got a couple of inches either side down this lane, so I need to be super careful. Once we're at the shed, I need to line up as square as I possibly can to the shed door. The cart gets unhitched from the tractor and then I need to try and squeeze the tractor out from the space that I'm in. The cart's tractor unit is already in the shed, so I just shunt forwards as far as I can, back over the hitch, then forwards with enough room to be able to back out between the cart and the shed. And whilst I turn around and head back to go and get the generator trailer, the cart will hopefully be put away whilst I'm gone. So Dad has backed the tug up to the cart, hitched it up and pulled it straight into the shed. By the looks of it, it went in really well. In the meantime, I've got back down to the generator to hitch it up. So I turn myself around and back up to the generator trailer, where Dan and Martin have been waiting for me. By this point we've got hitching up down to a T and it doesn't take long at all. So once we're hitched up, safe and secure, I make my way back down to the shed and this time Martin and Dan follow me back down. Once again I am being very careful not to break anything as I come through. So I'm definitely a bit quicker going back down to the shed than I was when I was bringing it out on Bridgewater Carnival morning. Once again, as I come back down to the shed, I try and get it as lined up to the door as I possibly can. And I pull up as close to behind the cart as I possibly can, giving me enough room to manoeuvre out. Once everyone's happy that I'm lined up to the shed, they unhitch the generator trailer so that I can shunt myself back and forwards to get out. And I think I did park a little bit too close as I needed quite a few shunts to get out. Then Dad gets back into the tug and reverses the tug and the cart back up onto the generator trailer. And the best way to do this is keeping everything dead straight, which is why I had to get myself perfectly lined up with the door. Once the pin is in, we can connect a red airline and pull it into the shed. Okay. I've actually never known Vaggie's cart to go in the shed so easily. Normally, there is quite a bit of faffing around. As much on this occasion, it has been quite easy. If I ever won the lottery, I would buy some land for the Carnival Club with a shed on it where we could drive in one end and straight out the other end. And it would be in an area where we could put it back in on the Saturday night and go home and have a full day's rest on the Sunday. And who knows, if that happened, we might even be able to pop into the after party on the Saturday night without worrying about getting up the next day to put the cart away. 
But I'm sure I'm not on my own with this dream. I'm sure many people in Carnival wish this for their own clubs. Putting the car away today has taken around an hour. Yet some years we have been here nearly all morning. Okay. That was easy, wasn't it? That was cool. And as we shut down the doors on another year, there is already an ideas meeting planned for tomorrow night for next year. There is just one little job left to do. We need to take the mud guards off of the tractor and take it back to the place where we hired it. The farmer that hired the tractor out to us used to be heavily involved with vagabonds. Another tractor driver spots me as I'm going through Bridgewater and he puts his hand up. He may have thought it was the farmer's son, Kieran. And that's that. The tractor is parked up at the farm and that is officially the end of Carnival 2023. Thanks for watching.